Around the time the wheel and edge light bar switched from comet flash only to multi-pattern, the power supplies had a gray wire that changed purpose from rapid rate to something called turbo. What does turbo mean? Well, there's some theories. Um, what turbo does is acts as a high power in the sense that there's a low power function and there's a regular power function. Turbo is a high power function. Um, in forehead comet flash power supplies um, with two alternate patterns and six head later potted version comet flash and two other pattern power supplies, the uh, gray wire uh, increased the uh, energy delivered to the light heads um, proportionately to that um, amount that the low power did to the standard. Um, this is a very late uh, pre-EB6 um, Comet Flash and three pattern supply uh, from an edge bar. One of the last open frame versions. And um, what I'm showing here is first the lower po low power settings. Um, and then the standard power settings, and you can see there's a pretty significant uh, jump in the uh, amps, watts um, consumed. And now I'm activating the turbo wire, and you can see it uh, increases proportionately. And the uh, sound of the uh, firing strobes increases proportionately as well. Um, so what was this feature for? Well, we only saw it in four head um, supplies at the end of the run of bars with non-linear strobes. And we then saw it in the uh, six head versions of supplies for bars that did not use helix or non-linear strobes. So one theory would be that the turbo wire is a mechanism to select a higher output uh, for turbo or linear strobes. Um, the earlier one having four heads, meaning you would put your four corners on turbo because they are the longer linear strobes and that is how those bars were wired the inner helix strobes were on a separate supply um, and then moving on later with the potted eb6 uh, at that point there really weren't a lot of inboard helix strobes the bars were primarily all linear at that point so you could uh, afford to put more than just the outboards on a turbo so there's kind of a view of that uh, forehead supply and now here the EB6 which is a six head supply um, both of which uh, have the gray turbo wire and um, some graphics to just kind of show the difference uh, in uh, amperage and watts between low power standard power and turbo power um, it's noticeable and I did try it with some um, inboard helix style strobes um, to test which are what these uh, par 36s are although they are a very robust version of that type of strobe uh, it did make them very loud and very bright uh, it didn't seem to damage them in any way but I can imagine it may shorten their uh, overall service life um, so my going theory is that the turbo function uh, refers to the turbo tubes, which is what they called linear corner tubes and linear inboard tubes. And it was there so that you could hardwire the bar to uh, provide more power to the longer larger volume uh, linear strobe tubes. 
So I ran through a couple of tests just looking at uh, power consumption or output, uh, wattage, amp draw, which is kind of hard to see in numbers because of the, the patterns. Uh, I did only use Comet Flash. I didn't put it in the two other patterns that are available in these uh, supplies, which are um, Rapid Random, which is really just Rapid Single Flash, and uh, Rapid Double Flash, and really the third pattern, which is a combination of those two, which is the uh, ever-popular uh, Action Flash, which uh, alternates between uh, Single Flashes and... Uh, Comet Flash. I didn't do that because I figured it would complicate it. Um, but really, just what I'm demonstrating here is that these supplies actually had three power levels. Low power, standard, and high power. Whereas uh, later, uh, strobe supplies were low power or high power only. And in earlier models, the same is true. So I think this represents a time period where... Um, the need to be able to power the linear or turbo uh, reflectors or tubes with a higher power uh, was recognized and this was the mechanism for doing so which explains why it was available on the forehead earlier models when uh, helix inboards were still available and six head models later when things are pretty much all linear. So that's my theory. Uh, if you have any other ideas or uh, better information, please post it in the comments. And uh, as always, uh, please like and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.